On this show, Daily Debrief, we have often talked about the disastrous impact of the Israeli assault on the health system in Gaza. This continues, of course, with health workers being killed or arrested, facilities being attacked and aid being denied. In the West Bank too, health facilities have been a target in various ways, from direct physical attacks to smear campaigns. We go to Anna to understand the picture. Anna, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, the situation in the West Bank often talked, not so much talked about, but attacks continuing. Of course, attacks have been continuing for a very long time, but also intensifying since October. So maybe first, could you take us, give us a general picture of what is happening to health facilities and health workers in that region? Well, the the attacks are uh, are very different uh, when you look at the form of uh, f- form of them in the West Bank. If we compare them to Gaza, of course. So in Gaza, well, we know that uh, hospitals have been under heavy bombardment, so direct physical attacks. In the West Bank, we are talking more about incru- uh, uh, just intrusions by the Israeli occupying forces uh, and another kind of terror that is being disseminated uh, among the people and uh, and the health workers uh, in the health institutions and health centers there. So just one of those examples, you know, uh, as uh, many media outlets have reported last week, uh, we have seen something that's uh, rarely been seen, and that's uh, an intrusion by armed forces uh, who are masked as patients, as um, as health workers in the hospital uh, where they killed three people. So this is something that, men, uh, that again, many pa- Palestinian commentators have warned that will have uh, a very long lasting impact on how people in the West Bank perceive healthcare, about how they relate to uh, to healthcare and to health workers, and have warned that, of course, you know, fear is going to only to grow after, after that. So um, if we look at the forms that uh, of attacks that have been uh, conducted against health healthcare in the West Bank, we know that uh, what what the aim of those is, is to dehumanize health services, to dehumanize uh, health professionals, and essentially just to destroy the hope that people have and uh, the relationships that, that, that they have uh, established with the health system. And, and of course, uh, these attacks starting way before October, so could you also maybe give us some kind of a context into what kind of the, what has been the health scenario overall in the West Bank itself, and the kind of pressure the people there have faced? Of course. So uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, we've talked about it here on People's Dispatch and on Daily Debrief uh, on a number of occasions. But of course, the the attacks against healthcare are one uh, uh, one of the main parts of the Israeli occupation and attacks on uh, on Palestine. Because if you destroy a health system, of course, you know you, you're destroying something that people need to to survive. So it's um, it's being done in different ways. Of course, uh, we've reported on the cases where Israeli forces uh, outlawed or persecuted uh, Palestinian uh, civil society organizations who were involved in the provision of healthcare. That includes the health work committees, of course, uh, which the case of which we uh, we have reported uh, on also uh, for a long period of time whose then former director, Shada Ode, spent almost a year in jail because uh, the Israeli occupation uh, found it, uh, found it uh, you know, proper to, uh, to just outlaw the, um, the organization and uh, to persecute the work that they were doing. But then, uh, then again, um, other problems which, uh, which uh, the occupation is causing uh, are, of course, very reliant on the administration and man- so-called administrative part of, uh, of healthcare. Many people in the West Bank, most of them actually, they need to travel to, uh, to reach hospitals, to reach essential treatment. For that, for that, they need special permits. So uh, we've known that over decades, of course, Israel was very, very conservative with the issue of such uh, of such permits. We know that people have died because they they ha- had been waiting for per- permits too long. We know that children were not allowed to be accompanied by parents because children were granted a permit, but parents were not. And so what we we have seen since October 7, 2023, is that Israel has virtually just you know. Uh, stopped all the permits that were already in place. Uh, so that has mean that, for, for example, thousands of patients could not access cancer care because there is no cancer care in the West Bank because, the, uh, uh, because again, the Israeli occupying forces are saying that uh, the treatments that are needed, the equipment that is needed uh, is dual use. So essentially alleging that um, 
the uh, establishment of cancer and oncological services in the West Bank would not be for health purposes, but for resistant purposes. So that is yet again, one of the ways that healthcare in the West Bank is being attacked. Thank you so much, Anna, for that update. A new security bill is in front of the US Senate. It includes provisions for more money for the wars of Ukraine and Israel, and an extremely harsh set of rules for restricting the entry of migrants and refugees. However, despite this win-win for proponents of war and xenophobia, some sections still seem not entirely happy and this bill might struggle to pass the other chamber of Congress, the House of Representatives. We go to Anish to understand the politics of this bill. Anish, thanks so much for joining us. We have talked about this bill in the past, which the Republicans and the Democrats have very different reasons for trying to push through and hence a lot of the disagreement. But maybe could you take us through the origins, what is really the agenda of this bill and what is the latest proposal that is in front of the Senate? Well, when we talked about the uh, the entire defense spending at the time, uh, this uh, a previous version of the bill was uh, struck down, uh, primarily because the Republicans wanted uh, a much stronger uh, or a much harsher uh, border security or border control policy, and that pretty much included uh, not just limiting the number of people who entered uh, the borders, but also. Uh, you know, potentially creating uh, a system that will push back on uh, asylum seekers even. And that is pretty much why uh, we see this kind of new bill uh, with an additional sp set of uh, spending um, being pushed through by right now by the Senate in a bipartisan manner. Uh, it is being, uh, you know, pushed through uh, with uh, the support of um, a bulk of the Democrats even uh, in the Senate, and possibly it might get a significant number of majority, uh, you know, Democrats within the House of Representatives to back it up. Uh, the this bill is going to include uh, funding, ex extra funding for uh, Israel, for Ukraine, uh, for uh, right now even uh, China and uh, the Red Sea. So what we're looking at is an expanded set of uh, proposals. Uh, which is going to bring in one of the most harshest uh, border control uh, border control policy under the Biden administration, and uh, this will include uh, putting a cap on weekly uh, number of uh, you know immigrants who uh, cross the border, which apparently, according to the bill, should not cross more than five thousand, and there will be emergency measures which will essentially shut down the borders uh, in uh, for all. Uh, you know, effects and purposes, it, but it won't be a total shutdown. And it will also take out all protections uh, given to the DREAMers, which are uh, people who are protected under the DREAM Act uh, that intends to protect those who came to the United States as children, uh, undocumented immigrants who came uh, to the U.S. as children and grew up in the country and pretty much, you know, are part of the country as well. Uh, but have uh, irregular documentations. And so it also takes out those kind of protections. So what the Republicans have achieved is one of the harshest border control policy uh, under, under a democratic administration. And that is pretty much a win-win for them because if you look at it, most of them also support the hawkish uh, warmongering that the Democrats are also engaged in when it comes to uh, the war in Ukraine or for that matter, the war in uh, Gaza, and in both the cases, there has been massive, uh, 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 massive proposals for about sixty billion dollars uh, to be sent to Ukraine, or you know, to be sent for the war efforts in Ukraine, which will actually continue the war rather than bring an effective end or a proper ceasefire to the situation. And uh, obviously, it is going to uh, put in about sixteen billion dollars about two, two and a half billion dollars for what, what they call the, uh, the Red Sea operations uh, included uh, into the into Israel, which is running a genocidal war. So all of this is basically, uh, you know, clearly showing the United States uh, and its political elites uh, united uh, in their war efforts and uh, in their, uh, you know, imperialism at the same time, uh, a big win for the Republicans if you consider if this actually uh, gets through the House as well. But obviously, this is still not enough for uh, the Republicans who uh, continue to dominate the House. Uh, the Speaker already saying that it will be dead on arrival. And so we are actually looking at a situation where 
the democrats have to be uh, are being pushed into a corner and they're actually taking it up rather than fight back uh, on these proposals well Anish, that was really my question that uh, it the uh, fate of the bill seems kind of uncertain in the house of representatives so and i think even donald trump has criticized it the speaker of the house of representatives has criticized it so what more do the republicans want considering the already harsh nature of this bill in every aspect well uh, one thing that we could uh, figure out is that uh, it has some some basic level of protection which is basically a universal international standard for protection for uh, asylum seekers many of whom uh, might be uh, fearful of their safety or their family safety if they were deported back to their home countries and in many of these cases uh, there are protections being inbuilt into this bill and this is something that many republicans do not want and there are other proposals which actually basically uh, consider human rights and human safety uh, into consideration at the very basic minimum level even though it is still going to be an atrocious uh, level of de- deportation and even you know possible pushback at the borders uh, we are looking at a situation where the republicans want the at least the most right wing of the republicans really want to push through Uh, a version of the bill that will be uncompromising at all levels when it comes to immigration because that's what they have used as their election plan already we must remember that united states is already in the in an election mode and obviously the pro trump republicans which are increasing in numbers by the day when you uh, you know as the primaries are nearing uh, uh, it's it's going to be uh, far more difficult for the democrats to uh um, hold on to this unless uh, and and the reason why the democrats are holding on to this is primarily because they want to fund uh, the war efforts in ukraine and the war efforts in israel and that is pretty much their only uh, version of appeasing uh, the right wing war hawkish tendencies within the united states so it is uh, and that is the only, there are only uh, foreign major foreign policy uh, uh, achievement uh, under the biden administration as well so uh, this is a this is not a very good situation to begin with because obviously the republicans are not really opposed to any of the uh, you know continuing wars around the world but it's uh, they are just using that as uh, a bait as uh, you know using the democrats push for uh, more wars uh, and uh, hijacking that to get what they want which is harsher border controls and that is going to be a significant uh, it, we we have to wait and see how things are going to pan out because obviously the house speaker is not a representative of the majority of republicans so we will have to wait and see how things pan out in the house itself uh, but definitely things are quite unsure and uncertain at this point in time and uh, we might see some delays in the coming uh, weeks um, but uh, you know uh, and might even see some amendments that might be even more surprising um, but, but we have to really just uh, you know sit back and you know watch how things pan out right now for the moment thank you so much anish for talking to us that's all we have in today's episode we'll be back with a fresh daily debrief tomorrow in the meanwhile do visit our website peoplesdispatch.org follow us on all the social media platforms and if you're watching this on youtube please hit that subscribe button